Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the um, first class of the new year for our first sacraments. Um, congratulations again on making your um, first reconciliation, your first confession um, back in November. And now we are going to spend the next few classes preparing for your um, first Eucharist or first communion. Um, our opening prayer was listed uh, at the beginning of the Google form, but again, um, we can pray that quickly. So in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My Lord Jesus Christ, it is your great love for us that keeps you day and night present in the Blessed Sacrament, full of compassion and love, waiting for us to visit you. I believe that you are really present in the Sacrament of the Eucharist. From the depth of my heart, I adore you, and I thank you for the many graces you've given me, especially for the gift of yourself in this sacrament, and for the privilege of visiting you in the church at this time. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, this prayer is describing what's called Eucharistic adoration. So Eucharistic means the Eucharist, the um, body and blood, and adoration means that um, you are adoring, loving, spending time with um, that person or item. Um, so Eucharistic adoration is a time when people can go into the church and just sit in front of where um, the body and blood of Christ is and just be in his presence while he's there um, in the Eucharist, in the um, bread and the wine uh, that is now his body and blood. Um, and that's because um, the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, is so incredibly important and special that people will go and just sit in front of it just to be in Jesus' presence. Um, so we're going to talk about why um, in the Catholic Church the Eucharist is so very special. Um, so the first thing we have to do is set the stage. So we're going to talk about um, a few things that happened at the Last Supper. Um, the Last Supper was um, the Passover meal. Passover um, is a Jewish holiday. Um, and Jesus ate the Passover meal with his disciples up in the upper room um, of one of the men in the city of Jerusalem. And while he was up there, um, he taught his disciples some things. Um, he left them with some um, uh, instructions and he let them know what was going to be happening over the next few days, which was the crucifixion, um, his arrest, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Um, and one of the first things that he did before they ate the meal was wash the feet of his disciples. Um, so we're going to read um, John 13, 1 through 20. John is the last of the four Gospels. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a bowl and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around them. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also wash my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew he was to betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but we're going to boil this down to um, a few things. First of all, um, in the Jewish laws, um, you needed to bathe yourself before you ate to make sure that you were clean. And Jesus is saying, you know, you don't have to do that anymore. Just make sure that, like, your feet aren't gross. Um, just make sure that, like, you're keeping up with, like, basic hygiene. So he's basically saying, you know, all of those rules that um, people had to do in order to please God um, before Jesus came. Um, Jesus' sacrifice kind of made all of those rules like, oh, you can't eat pork and you can't... Um, eat milk and meat at the same time and you, and all of these other other small rules that they had um, weren't as important because Jesus had given them an easier way um, to communicate with God and to please God. Um, also, the washing of the feet was something that um, was done by slaves or servants. So the fact that Jesus, who was their Lord, their master, their teacher, was lowering himself to wash their feet himself um, was kind of crazy to them. They were like, you know, that's a slave's job. Why are you doing it? And that's why Peter first said, like, you'll never wash my feet. Like, you're, you're, too, you're too great. You're my Lord. Like, I can't let you wash my feet. Um, and Jesus said, no, like, you, you need to let me wash your feet. And the reason he did that is because he wanted them to understand that the purpose of Jesus coming was not to be um, a Lord in the sense of having a lot of power, the reason Jesus came was to be actually be a servant um, and to give him of himself to other to help other people. And he wanted to let the disciples know that they had the same responsibility. They weren't supposed to walk around saying, oh, I'm one of Jesus' disciples, I'm powerful and special. They were supposed to walk around saying, I'm one of Jesus' disciples, how can I help you? How can I share God's love with you? Um, and that's what he wanted them to understand. So this story is only in the Gospel of John. Um, there's four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are often called the synoptic Gospels. Um, and that just means that the three of them are um, more concerned with telling like events from Jesus' life, whereas the Gospel of John um, spends more time um, talking about Jesus's teachings, the conversations that he had. Um, that's because all of the Gospels have a different theme. Um, they tell ba basically the same story, but you have um, each person writing with a slightly different purpose. And that's why the Gospels are a little bit different um, when you read them from one to the other. So the Gospel of Matthew um, focuses on the fact that Jesus is the Messiah that the um, earlier scriptures in the Old Testament predicted. Mark focuses on the fact that Jesus is the Son of God who is able to do miracles and who is able um, to have a lot of authority and power. Luke focuses on the fact that Jesus was a friend of sinners, a compassionate healer. And then John focuses on the fact that Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus um, reveals who God is. He shows God's kingdom um, by his words and by his actions. And Jesus truly is the son of God, who is um, both human man and also um, divine being in one person. So after the feet were washed, um, then we can move into um, the eating part of the Last Supper which is where the Eucharist um, was completed for the very first time. 